Welcome to Forge Down Under. Let's meet our judges. Shane Savage. Nick Graham. And our guest judge, Matthew Kane. Let's get into it. Welcome to the first episode of Forge Down Under, Australia's very first forging competition show. I'm Shane Savage, I'm one of the judges. This is Nick Graham and Matthew Kane. Each episode has a theme and is made up of three rounds. Contestants receive a challenge that they must start in round one and finish in round two. Each round is judged based on a rubric and the final score from both round one and two combined will decide who moves on to round three, where they will get a new and more advanced challenge. The winner of round three will become a Forge Down Under champion. Basically guys, what we'll be doing is we have a first three hour forging component. In this three hours, you'll be picking a mystery bit of material. You'll have 30 seconds to select your material. You cannot reselect it. and It's the only material you will be getting for the competition. We will be judging the first three hours based on a common rubrics, which is a one to five score based on three categories. You can get one to five for each points, which will be going accumulative at the end of the day competition. This is very important for the second part, so get as much done as you can, guys. Um, G'day, my name's Simon. Um, I've been making knives for about seven years now. I mostly make culinary knives, so I'm hoping the competition today um, is focused on culinary objects, fingers crossed. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what happens. My name's Brendan. Um, I go by Chapman by Design. Pretty worried about the competition. Um, I haven't made, a, I haven't finished a knife in probably 12 months. I've not lit the forge for nine months. So I'm not match fit. Uh, I'm more of a creative blacksmith than a knife maker. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you know, good healthy dose of competition. The blacksmith industry is and should be for each other. We all prop each other up um, and help each other out. So yeah, good friendly competition, just goes one way. Rob from Wolf and Eagle Forge. Um, I specialise in Japanese knives using samurai steel. Uh, I love forging with salvage steel, so that's one of my favourite things to do and that's how I got started. Um, I've always had a passion for making things and tinkering, so for me um, it's a real outlet for not only creativity but it's a place where I can relax and enjoy myself while making something creative. Boys, once you've selected your steel, you'll have three hours to perform this first forging procedure. Once I lift this sheet, you have 30 seconds to select them. Your time starts now. Go. You, what you select, guys, is really important. Have a think about it. Don't stress too much. You have two options here, and you cannot re-select material. You can only select one of them. Pick the clip. I don't know why. It's round, it looks like a dog turd. So I've um, got a piece of something. Um, hopefully this will be easier to flatten out and forge into a blade than something round. I'll find out. Yeah, so I picked this because it's um, kind of like how I, it's almost a billet. Um, I think it's probably a 1084 equivalent. It's like a railway kind of clamp, it sort of clamps some stuff down. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what the steel is and I'm pretty sure I know how to heat treat it, we'll see. So I chose this piece because it says made in Australia. Um, it's a nice big uh, piece of stock, about six mil, maybe eight mil at the most, and plenty of material to work with. Nice and flat stock, so we'll see how we go. And when I saw everyone pick everything else up but the clip, I was like, did I just bring a knife to a gunfight? Did I just choose a Nerf gun? You know, I just thought, what have I done? <laughs> like, everyone else has chosen something different. So. Now you've picked your material, guys. Good luck. For the best or the worst, you got what you got. Your challenge for this show is not only to use the material you selected, it needs to be themed. Our theme is barbecue related. It is very broad, so you have a lot of creativity. It's either going to be good or bad for you. A lot can go wrong. Do the best you can. Your time starts now. Is there an ignition system? <laughs> <laughs> Um, shall we turn this? Shall we turn this bad boy on? Hey, away from the ball spot, all right? Steel choice. 
the, the material is, is the same material, but the dimension of it is what's going to dictate how they go about this. And as a few of them mentioned, they picked it because it was already flat, but it's not long enough, so they have to draw it out, whereas the other one will be plenty long and just needs to be flat. Drop forged! <laughs> Boy! Wouldn't be forged if it wasn't drop. It's worth extra if you drop it, right? Yeah. Extra carbon. That's yeah, it has, it has three points of hardness. <laughs> It looks like someone's turned the press on and is ready to start flattening or drawing out the material. Yeah, that's actually quite impressive. 12 minutes in, they have a flat material to work from, so now that's it should be it. much easier to 100%. sort of plan and design. This is the most opportunity where they can break the material, and it'd be a split second. If they lose too much, if they move it, they may not be able to move it back. What Steve's doing there is he's actually drawing it out longer, where yep. I think we should more focus on getting the width of it out and come through the side entry of the press widen the blade rather than lengthen it. I'd never used a press before, but using the press today, knowing its capabilities, I, I would have chosen the flat clip straight up. How do you think you're going, Rob? What are you thinking? Uh, sort of Decent sized Kyoto, which is what I like to do. I love it. Nice it's all around. Yep. I mean, in the time that we have, it's achievable. Half an hour mark, guys. Two hours and half left. Marking oh, out shape on his anvil. Going back full traditional blacksmithing. If I draw it out, I can see where I need some modifications and get the shape that I'm desiring. I'm actually super interested to see what they do with handles. Because yeah. if you make the best knife in the world, if you mess the handle up, you ruin the whole knife. Yeah. And it's vice versa. You look really relaxed, Simon. Uh, yeah, I like the way you're going. Yeah, good, just on the outside, not on the inside. <laughs> I'm trying to get a bit of an idea in my head of what's going to happen. Do this... you think you have enough material for this? Yes, I think right. I have more than enough material. Yep. I think I need to start working, bring it down. I've got the height here, I've got way more than I need for this. Yep. I've been trying to get this forward so I don't have to grind it out, but. <laughs> we have 45 minutes in. I think you thought he was going to take 45 minutes left. <laughs> Better get back to it. So I was second guessing myself probably most of the time. So cool under down so I can touch it. I'll rough shape it on the grinder. Okay. Get it like fine, fine tune it. Yep. Then I'm going to thermocycle. Okay. Then I'm going to go in for right. the quench. Two hours remaining, guys. Only two hours. Are you on track? Yeah. What are you thinking? Big chopper. Big chopper. Yeah. Right. Are you going to go full tank or hidden tank? Full tank. You think you can get it done in time? Yep. Yep. So are you forging the bevels or are you just still profiling? Uh, forging the bevels. Okay. And I'm profiling the spine a little bit more. I'm trying to taper it out to the tip a little bit. Okay, so you're going to distal taper forward? Yeah, of course. In the competition? Yeah, of course. Oh man, I'll be impressed if you pull that off. I am. Mean, <laughs> Full forged, maybe not, but definitely if I touch it on the grinder. Oh, if you get most of forged, yeah. and then finish off the grinder, it's going to be a lot less grinding. Yeah, That's good. Sure. good. Good luck. So it's good to see that you've planned your uh, pin stock. Yeah, so before it's hardened, yep. it's a lot easier to drill. Yep. So I thought I'd put in. Are you putting a lanyard cable in? A lanyard well? cable, All so right. you can hang it on a, a hook on the side yeah, of the barbecue. And, and 
Um, that's good because swinging knives, you want to land it at the safety as that's well. That's it, true. Uh, Selected my pin stock to match that lanyard hole. Yep. I'll drill those before I harden the blade. I like your design here. That's yeah, very they're very artistic. Gonna... I did some bevels. Yeah, you're forging your bevels completely, which is good. How happy are you with where you are at the moment? Whoa. Are you tracking? Uh, no, uh, nervous, nervous about the time. <laughs> Rob and Simon, or it's all between them at the moment. If you're talking high quality fit and finish, these two are smashing it. Look at Simon's design. It's impressive. So, what are we thinking, brother? I want to pre-drill my holes before I do the heat treatment. How many holes are you thinking? Uh, normally I'd do three, but maybe two would be quicker. Yeah, I like what he's doing. He's measuring the handle because it is actually really important how long the handle is. Yeah. yeah. A little tracking how you plan. You got anything you're worried about? Um, try not to worry about anything and just just get into the flow. That's a good good plan to stick to. Yeah. Nice well, relax. see how it goes. How you going, mate? Yeah, all right. Getting there. Yeah. I need to take it to the grinder. Yeah. Um, I need to finish sort of planishing it. Try yeah. and get it straight. Yeah. Uh, probably do uh, drill the holes first. Yeah. So Are I need you to stress it about time now? A little bit, We're yeah. halfway through, exactly. Yeah. I, think, I think I'll be right. Like, I'll have a knife finished. Yep. I don't think I'll have a handle on it, but that's the next stage. So I should be right. No, good. I feel like I'll have a knife. Going in for the hot punch. Did you notice what he did? He measured the hop punch, so now he knows how far to go, and that is pre-planning. That's good. He does have to be very careful. Now that it's gone cold, that steel will tear if he pushes it too far. Yeah. I think he's starting to panic. I've noticed there's a different in his movement. You're right. Try and pop bottle opener in the back of it. No, mate. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was Although, hoping. I was like, I'd say, oh, it's, it's a good you're idea. Huh? Hole. Like, I'd say, oh, it could be cool. I'm doing it. You mind, Mike? Yeah, no, 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 go for it, man. Like, I'm stoked. I've done one once, and um, it ended up being a really cool knife, eh? Hey. How do you think your progress is going so far? What are you uh, worried about? Being the most amateur person here. I think you're doing pretty well. It's a good shape. I think I'm doing okay. I think it's going to have a lot of heft to it. Uh, yeah, it's probably a bit thicker than I would have liked, but that's, but that suits well with a the barbecue theme, I would think. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Especially that's if you're doing chopping tasks. Yeah. You're a good chopper. How do you think you're going, Steve? Crushing it, mate. Crushing All it. over it. What's the design you're doing on the end there? Is that a bottle opener? Well, barbecue is complete without beer. That's, mate. that's really good. I like that. Think you're on track? Yeah. As long as the judges don't talk to me while I'm uh, oh, oh, going well, for the queen. No. <laughs> We're just trying to That's slow you down biggest, so you stress out. My biggest flaw as a blacksmith is talking. <laughs> yeah. Talk us through the process you're doing on the handle here at the moment. Because uh, I need to drill holes in it and this is a really hard seal. Okay. So I'm just trying to anneal it so that when I go to drill it's not going to take me three hours. So yes. Hopefully. An hour guys. Start stressing out if you haven't done heat treat. Simon's successful in getting these holes through. Stress, stress, stress. You just need to slow down. Yeah. Really come on. Heat treat's done. Okay. Now I'm trying to remember what comes next. If I let it cool down at room temperature before I do the tempering. Never done a tempering this way before. Yeah. I've always done it in an oven, so. Yeah, I was pretty lost to be honest. I've never done a flame temper before. Um, I just chuck everything in the oven at 200 degrees for an hour, do that twice, had pretty good results. When you said flame temper, I was kind of like, what's a flame temper? Are you still on this step? You've been doing this for a little bit. Uh, yeah. It's um, not the home setup, so yeah, there's a certain, I know, it's always amount of stress when you involved. work in someone else's workshop. But it also didn't make it easy. A lot of these are blunt drill bits and they're random too. Yeah, it's pretty, actually, super annoying. How do you go with the distal taper? Yeah, not too bad. I got a fair bit in in forging, yep. which just means a lot less uh, a lot less grinding. So I'm kind of where I'd want to be for a, for a 
uh, quench, which is good. So what are you doing? Tempering, Simon? Yep, I'm just gonna run an anneal. Okay, how many cycles are you doing? I just do one, man. Are you gonna risk it? Yeah. Okay. I know. Probably, I, at this point, probably. <laughs> Working with we'll some see, time we'll I know, running I know, out of time. I feel like we've got time for two, we'll uh, see how we go. Steve. <laughs> Try not to lose it. I like how you're using the wet cloth to stop it over tempering. That's smart. Yeah, the rest it. Yeah. Quite difficult to get an even flame temper through a whole blade doing it this way, especially with the torch. So you've got to watch that over tempering spot. Uh, we're at 46 minutes. How much do you think you're going to get done in that time frame? Uh, I'm going to get it quenched. Yep. Um, then I'll probably panic and try to get it straightened because it may bend. Yep. Um, yep. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm watching Steve do do it with the, the map gas, yeah. and it looks a little bit intimidating. It, it is. And I like the idea of doing it in front of the forge, because you yeah. can maybe a bit more slow, a bit more control. Are you getting a bit worried about time frame and you haven't started? <laughs> You've been waiting around 15 minutes just on this step alone. I have been. Yeah. I've been really uh, <laughs> weighing up my options. <laughs> have you noticed nobody's actually grind the bevel to see what colour the is going to be other than over there? So what you really should be doing is after heat treat, you should grind a bit of a bevel see. so you can see the colour through the steel because yeah. you're not going to be able to see it through. Yeah, you can't see damn colours yeah. on the forge scale. I'm interested to see if Rob's doing that because he's putting it in front of the forge, but yeah, no, the, this, is, thing, this yeah. is wrong. I yeah. don't think they're going to get it right. They're going to be too brittle. And Rob's putting Brendan down a garden path here. Oh. Is that like a crank in the handle from when I did the bottle opener? Oh, yeah. So I'll just straighten that out. It's pretty good now. Yeah. I can get that with a grind anyway if it scales a bit flat. Rob, he's, he's taking a bit of a turd approach. He's, he's obviously pretty happy with where he's up to, and he's not in a rush, so he's just loading now and he's helping everyone else out in bits and pieces. Yeah, that's good. It's good to see that's, that... That's where it should be in the industry. Everyone should be helping each other. No one's in competition. No, no. It's, it's really good to see that within the community, just that mateship and that camaraderie is right. You know, yeah, even, even when they're put against each other in yeah. a competition, you've got money on the line. Yeah. This is oh, how they act. That's exactly it. That's what we should get more in the industry. 100%. So can you explain the tempering process and why you went for that colour and how you approached it? Sure. So the straw colour is like the hard, hard tip, so that would be the tip of your nail. Um, the purples, blues, browns and greys would be like the shaft of the nail. So, because obviously someone's going to have to hit that, so you don't want that to deform. So the spine gives the knife the flexibility and the cutting edge will be as hard as possible. Yeah. Because uh, it's this light straw colour. So the, the spine's really like bluey, grey. It's about purple through there and then it comes down to a straw. Yeah, it goes soft, medium, hard is a good way to think about it in simplistic terms. Two minutes, guys, two minutes. Start stressing more. Tools down, time's up. All right, guys, first three-hour component done. How do you think you went, Rob? The clips that we started with are pretty thick, so I aim for forging the billet, forging out to make a bit of a billet so I could get a decent size it is quite a big knife. <laughs> yeah, don't mess around, man. So and you're going for a bolster out of your offcut? Yeah, yeah, so hidden tang. Yep. And I'll, with the offcut that I cut off there, I'll use that for a bolster, no doubt. And you got halfway um, through shaping your handle? Yeah, I just shaped it up. I'm pretty happy with um, progress so far. Mm -hmm. Happy with the shape, uh, grinding starting to get there, the temper, I don't know, we'll see how that yeah. goes. I uh, pretty much had it roughed out in the first half hour. And then uh, it was just a little bit of tweaking and grinding and then did the heat treat and temper. Um, yeah, threw in a little extra surprise being a barbecue challenge. I thought it appropriate to have a bottle opener on it. 
Um, I think I probably went a little bit overboard at the end. My edge geometry was shaping up pretty nicely and then I've just overcooked it a little bit, so I'm going to have to spend a bit of time hand sanding, whereas I was hoping to try and avoid that. I'm really happy that the weight is centralised like here, right where you go for pinch grip. Yep. Um, so, and I, it's mostly forged geometry, so um, I'm pretty happy with it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to judge through quickly through, and we have already scored your knives based on five points, which is fit for purpose, design, proportions, and theme. Each of those gets one to five points, okay? So you can get a maximum of 15 points, which is going to cumulatively go for the next part of the show. So these points are really important because if you score incredibly low here, you're going to struggle at this next step, okay? So, Nick, uh, what was your uh, feedback on Rob? I really like your, your overall design. I like the proportions between the blade to the handle width. I think you've done a really good job. Uh, I scored you a total of 11 points for this first segment. I was a bit worried when you sent Goyoto because it's a barbecue theme and you would get scored lowly if it wasn't barbecue theme. So, very happy you went really big. So, in my eyes, it counts as barbecue theme. So, I gave you a total of 12 points for this section. So, congratulations. Awesome. I gave you a total of 14 points for this one. Ooh. I like the proportions, I like that it's a larger than average size Gyoto, and I love that it's got the distal taper at the end. I think that's a great show of skill. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Alright, Brendan. I dig this thing man, she's hefty. Bit of grinding to do, but I can see the groundwork you've put in and I can see where you're heading with it. The size of the blade is what makes it fit the, uh, the theme. So my, my final score for your blade was 9 out of the 15. Super impressed with what you did really early on as well. Um, I said I had a few concerns as well, which we may not know until later if it's going to affect the overall thing, and this is going to affect a couple people. Um, I gave you an overall 9 score as well. Brendan, I gave you 10 points. I think that you've made a great knife in the time constraints that you've had and, and to your skill set as well. Um, I think it's got a lot of heft to it. Yeah, well done. Alrighty, hey, Simon, your time to shine, brother. Now this thing, straight off the bat I pick it up and without looking at it, it feels good. The weight and proportion is on point, okay? You've still got a bit of grind work to do. There's a couple little bits that need work over it, but the proportionality of it is, is, is nice. You know, the, that little upswept tip that you've used, I like that scimitar shape. It fits well within your barbecue theme. Um, so this is totaled out for a score of 9. Uh, personally, I absolutely love the shape of this knife. It looks really good, it feels really good. It's balanced in my eyes. I was a bit worried how you're going with the handle, but I see you fixed it up. So in my eyes, really aesthetically pleasing. So really happy with where you're going. And I gave you a total of 12, which is the same as uh, Rob. Congratulations. Simon, I gave you a total of 14 points for this one. It's very well balanced. I like that this is going to be super slicey. It's nice and thin behind that edge. I think this is going to fit the barbecue thing very well. Thank you. Steve, it's another one that feels really good in the hand. I would have liked a taller blade. Mm -hmm. uh, early on in the forging, there was a manoeuvre that I think inhibited your ability to get that height in, in how you went under the press. Mm -hmm. But you've adapted to that and still come out with a knife that would be well suited to a barbecue sort of thing, especially with the added detail on the end. Whether or not it works later on, we'll find out. Beers are on you. <laughs> For that, I gave you a total of nine points. Good work. You picked the only other material, which yes. is sort of limited in what you've done. Yep. And that one uh, little early thing, which is sort of railroad you in doing something like this. But no, I really like your style. It's for a slicer, 100% we want, mm. as Nick said. Doesn't feel bad in your hand, which is super important as well. But I've got very small hands, so I'll be interested to see what Matthew has to say. Sure. But yeah, I gave you a total score of nine as well. Thanks, man. Steve, I gave you a total score of 12. I like how it sits in the hand. I think that fits perfectly. Uh, it fits the barbecue theme with the bottle opener on the back. I think that's really creative. Well done. All right. Thank Congratulations, you. guys. So that everyone did super well. I'm very impressed with everyone. It's really good to see that you're all helping each other. All right. It's, it's really a nice banter. Everyone's working well within the environment. So very impressed with what everyone's done. So you should be proud of yourselves. All right, guys. We're on to the second part of the show, which is another three-hour component. In this section, you've got to completely finish your knife. This will be based on five categories with a one to five points for each category, okay? I highly recommend you do the best you can in all aspects because it will count towards your points at the end. The earlier points you got will count accumulatively at the end of the day. The two forgers who get the most points will be moving on to the advanced part of the competition. The other two people will be let go. Ready, set, go.
like Steve's cleaning up that bottle opener and smart because if it doesn't work I'm scoring incredibly low. <laughs> Rob has the hardest handle because if he gets it right, he's going to get five points. Yeah. If he gets it wrong, he's going to get zero points. It's literally, it's, there's no middle ground for the, those handles. He's got the super glue. Oh, here we go. This is interesting. I always yeah. love seeing. Oh, clever. I've never seen that before. Super glue in the handle to the handles so you can basically put the pilot holes in and break the blade off. That's yeah. clever. 10 minutes of preparation saves him 30 minutes of winging it later on. That's going to score highly in my book no matter how it turns out. Just the process right there. Yeah. So I'm up to a stage now where I want to put a choil in. Yep. So it choils this groove here at the back. Yep. Basically I'm, I'm just adding that in. I've overheated a little bit on the heel, yep. so you can see that by the discoloration, but I'm still adjusting as I go, so it's yep. kind of a as-you-go process, and then I'll refine that. So you've done a lot more grinding on the blade? Yeah, I've changed the, um, the plunge line. Yep. Still got a bit of flex in it, yep. it's not bad. Yeah, yep. it went quite blue right along the spine, so it should have that hardness across, uh, it's toughness along the back with that hardness in the, in the edge still. Yeah. I'm just being particular that I don't overheat on the grind because yeah. you can lose that temper. Oh, 100%. That's always a big beginner problem, right? Yep. That's why we don't grind with gloves. Yes. Plus, you don't get sucked into the machine. <laughs> Alright, now you're going well. Cheers. So, where are you up to now with uh, two hours and ten minutes left? Well, I think I'm going to start gluing my handle up so I can shape it. I like the way you're going. A little tiny bit of a warp at the end of it. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm going to get this out at that point, so it, nah. it, like, I think it is what yeah. it is. Also, forged textures, 100% personal preference. Personally, I love it, yeah, uh, but I know it. a lot of makers don't. Yeah, some people are really like not into it at all. It's yeah, just not their thing. It's yeah. the beauty about what we do, right? We do what yeah. we're interested in, so good, good work. Yeah, thank you. So you've been grinding for 55 minutes at the start of this, so uh, how are you tracking for that? Uh, look, I'm really happy with how the blade profile's starting to shape up. I'm conscious of the time. I'm just trying to uh, concentrate and take a meat away from the edge, because. Yep. This is too much material, this is taking too much time. And having that nice little food release, we were talking yeah, about just before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So probably a little bit more grinding to do on the handle, yep. not too much. And then yep. I want to start jumping into my... Well, what's your idea for handle? Have you picked your handle material yet? I have picked my handle material. Yep. I'm going to go black, I assume it's G10, black something yep. with um, some green resin. Alright, good luck. Cheers. Going well. Two hours left guys, two hours. Quite impressed though going over everyone. Everyone's going really different ways with their fit and finish. Yeah. Uh, as I said, Rob really got a good idea with his design. He, he nailed the chef knife. Uh, so he's rounded the spine over. He's got a really good choil. I'll be very surprised if he doesn't score very highly. Uh, it just comes down to how is he going to survive the destruction test. It's still only minor points, but it could mean the game. So did you find that the uh, micata binds a little bit after you drill it? So yeah, your pins bit. don't fully fit? Yeah. yeah. Have you used micata often? Uh, a little bit, hey. Yeah. yeah. I really dig it. I think it's great that it's waterproof. Yeah. That's um, the best part about Mercado. It's waterproof, it's heat resistant, it doesn't move in heat and cold, it's really durable. So are you planning on peening over your pins, are you? Um, it really depends on how much time I've got. I yeah. normally would, um, but in this situation I'm probably just going to epoxy them. Okay. I'm going to start working on my handle because I just don't want to run out of time. I've got two hours to go. Are you worried about your handles not being thick enough? Well, that's why I have the extra liner, because it's not a real thick scale. Um, it's a small knife, it's a thin knife. It probably doesn't need a real chunky handle compared to the other guys, but okay. uh, we'll see how she goes. He's, he's stressing. He doesn't have everything he's used to working with, and it really throws some people for a six. He 
he's stressing himself out, he's getting in his head and he's making a simple, simple task very hard. Sometimes, some people get caught in their own process. Yeah. And yeah. it's so hard for them to deviate it. Like this is an example, like first section was 20 minutes on the drill press. Mm. And now it's almost another 20 minutes. You can tell he's getting frustrated again, but there's easy ways around it. Yeah. He's too caught up in trying to be accurate and, and precise. But yeah. that won't count for anything if you don't finish in time. Yeah. Where are we up to now, Brian? Just um, trying to take a step back. Yep. And get my next game plan. Still on track with your plan? Uh, we've well, got enough time to get it finished, but it's not going to be to the level that I obviously want. Like yeah. Being a time having time constraints. Is there anything you would have changed in the first half to aid now, now that you're here? Mate, I, I would have chosen the other bit of steel yeah. had I known how a press is so beneficial. Yeah. My first time using a press, so, you mm. know, that's why using that call-up dog turd has um, left me with a very narrow blade. An hour and 22 minutes left, and you're, putting it, you're gluing your handle on, so I think you're on track. We'll see. I guess. Have you done any sanding on your blade or anything? No, no I haven't really. Um, okay. I've, I've done a little bit. I used to found a Scotch Bright belt. Uh, yep. Kind of hit it with that. Okay. Um, just really depends how much time I've got left. Yeah. If I feel like I've got time, I'm going to come back. I'd love to do. An hour and 20 more. is a lot of time, but it's also not a lot of time. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> oh, we'll see. Yeah. This is where I'd be stressing. Because um, right. I, I really want to use the um, time to make the handle look nice, but we'll, we'll yeah. see what happens. You've done your, your pin drills? Yeah. And you dry friction fitting it? Well, what's your plan of action from here? Uh, well, I wanted to use the grinders to clean up this edge, but yeah. everyone was on the grinder, so yep. I was trying to move on and do something else. So yep. I've drilled all my holes, yep. and I thought maybe while I'm waiting, I can just get that profile sorted, and then I can yep. get that profile sorted and glue yep. up. Separating okay. this is going to be interesting. Yeah, because you just friction fit it with a hammer. That's going to be quite difficult to pull apart. Yeah, and I can't find a smaller punch. so. I'm going to go into the grinding room and see All right. what I can do. No worries. And this is why I hate friction fitting handles dry. They become a nightmare. I tell you, I learned this the hard way really early on. I guess I'm learning it the hard way now. Yeah, it's never fun. Because you can see it's sort of like domed over. Yeah. When you hammered it through, it hit the anvil and domed it out. Then you forced it in there. Now yep. it's stuck here. Yeah. Yes. I started burning this in. I'm just worried because it's quite soft timber. Yeah. I don't want to burn through it. Burn through it. Yeah. So I oh. get a longer drill drill hole to get me going, and then hopefully I'll be able to burn through. But that's definitely not the right technique. But that's how we're doing <laughs> it today. That's called the quick and dirty. That's it. That's, that's it. it. Um, basically, I'm heating up the tank. We get a nice tight fit, and then it's just some epoxy and bolster and hopefully a bit of shaping and we'll be good to go. You're going for acid etch, eh? What are you thinking? Um, just a little bit of X Factor. Yeah, yeah. I like it. And so paint. can you tell Have us... Have you got paint? We do, yes. Spray paint? Yeah. Okay, oh, I see where you're going. That's interesting. Can you tell us why you decided to do that? Because I've got 45 minutes to go. And, and why I think is that... I'm sitting down yep. bottom two. Yep. So if this boosts me up into the yep. top two. So acid I etching it tomorrow. and spray paint, what finish is that going to give it? And why exactly is that a quick finish? That's it's, what you're going for? It's actually a pattern. Yeah. I'm going to put a, a, a fire pattern. Down ah, the blade. Oh, there we go. Interesting. Once I've sprayed the blade, yep. then I'll scratch off the image that I want to remain. Okay. Yep. Dip it in the ferret. The ferret will etch the blade. Ah, so you're going for an etch. Yep. After 
that comes out of the ferret. Mm -hmm. I'll remove the paint yeah. and then... Um, I like it. That's a really good off. idea. Because most people would use something like um, nail paint because it's thicker. Have you got nail paint? No. <laughs> <laughs> This may cause me to run out of time. Thirty-seven minutes, guys. I would be stressing quite a lot. On that edge on now, are we? Yeah, hopefully. I've only got two tenths of bugger all the time left, so I've got to do something. Seven minutes until you're done. If you're not on sharpening now, I would be. Seven, six, five, four, three. Two, done. Good work. All right, guys, we're up to the destruction test component of the show. So just remember this rubrics is based one to five. Our category is a fit for purpose. Fit and finish, design proportions, destruction, and theme. Destruction is one to five. Will not be be all and end all of your knife points, okay? One of the worst things you can do for a knife is hitting the bone test, okay? We all know how bad bone is on a knife. I'm not going out of my way to try to break your knife, um, but if it breaks uh, anywhere, it could be very bad. Oh, oh, oh. oh, nice big deformation. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Didn't survive that, and that's why bones are incredibly bad for knives. This is not designed to cut through bone, but um, this is about what I'd be expecting for the thickness of steel. So, pretty good a job otherwise. <laughs> exactly the same damage. <laughs> 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 Yeah, less damage, but still the same damage overall. I you think you're gonna go. Well, I've got less mass, so <laughs> we did <laughs> we did talk about this. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, look at him go. No damage. Nice. Oh, oh, the best. Nice. Hey, well well done. Get on you, brother. <laughs> the, the, the front half is pretty sharp. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. On to Brendan's knife. Let's see if it can do any better. The back half is sharp. Let's let's ignore that bit. For some reason. I don't know why that bit's well done. Well done. It actually it's skipped over the damage good. pretty easily. Yeah, it didn't, yeah, didn't it feel didn't like it could catch it up. Cool it sounded pretty. It sounded alright. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh no, nah, that's, that's pretty good. It's catching, but it's still it's sharp. It's good. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Looks like Brendan's knife's the only one to do slivers. Congratulations, guys. Everyone has got to the final part of the day. Six hours, and you've done really well from what you started with to what you have now. You did, you did a fantastic job, Rob. Uh, watching you through the whole process was, it was interesting not only to see how you went about it, but the difference in how much calmer you were through the process than a few of the other people. The blade itself, the shape, the theme, it's all on point for me. Even the damage it took in the destruction test, it, it's gonna take damage, we all knew that. I'm pretty happy with the amount that it took. 
the fit up around the handle is, is the only thing that I can really pick apart. Um, and for all those reasons, why I scored you a total of 14 points for this section. Again, I absolutely love the blade shape. Love what you've done with your fit and finish. You rounded your spine out, you rounded your choil. You got a really nice choil. Um, not unhappy with the damage. I basically scored pretty much what everyone else did. Um, my only critical part is the handle, basically. Yep. That's really what breaks the, the knife design for me. Basically, Western style hidden tank handles. You have to really ace them, otherwise they are a real big detractor to your overall fit and finish. Um, overall, I gave you a score of 17. Good job. Thank you. I gave you a score of 19. Uh, I think you had an awesome surface finish on that blade. I love how well the Scotch Bright really made the, the, the blade gleam. I like the overall design. The distal taper on the end gives it that, that little bit extra, what would you say, pizzazz. The only place I, I can see where it's fallen down is the handle fit up. I would have liked a little bit of a chamfer on, the, on that leading edge. Thank you. So, I love this thing. Really? Yeah. <laughs> My favourite part about it is the handle. Straight away, the way you've executed this handle, mm. having the multi facets with the flats, it feels incredible in the hands. It's actually the quickest way I could get the shape. Yep. <laughs> and it went with the compliment. feels amazing. Cool. If you spent 20 minutes on this handle with some sandpaper, which of course you didn't have, mm. you could turn this into a real showstopper. Yep. The only flaw I could find with it was this one little goo glue gap down here, yeah. okay? Yep. That was the only thing that was pulling away from the handle. Obviously the damage was to be expected and quite similar to what Rob copped. Mm -hmm. If I were to change anything and pick something I didn't like, it's heavy. It, it is. feels very heavy in the hand. It's still balanced fairly well, but you could have shaved a lot of meat out of the tang area, mm. even possibly done a, um, a tapered tang to balance out the blade a bit better and allowed yeah. you to remove more material further forward. Yep. Other than those few very minor things, I think this a bit, is a um, really incredible effort. Cheers. I was a bit hesitant on the power hammer. I'd never used one before and I was a bit worried about overdoing it. Yep. And then I don't know how I'd recover that. So I was like, better go too thick than too thin. Forge thick, grind thin. It's a good process. Yeah, when you've got plenty it's of time. Safe. It's safe. Well, and you're not paying for the belts. True. <laughs> <laughs> so for all those reasons, I gave you a total of 16 points. Cool. Wow. Love the shape. I was really worried how you progress early on, what you were going to do with it. Um, yep. But I really love it. As I said, it has the barbecue theme for me. I mm -hmm. personally like that it's heavy. This is something that I'd want, you know, someone who's into barbecuing would love to use. Love that you went chunky on the handle. Love the way you shaped the handle. In my eyes, this is a Japanese octagonal hidden tang on a full tang. Like if you look yep. at it, and it's really nicely shaped, nice and centered. Um, overall, Good. you did really, really well. Very impressed with it. Cheers. I gave you a total score of 16. Cheers. Righto, Brendan. I gave you a total score of 20. One of the highlights for me is your colour choice. I think it being an Aussie barbecue theme, the green with the gold pins kind of nails it. I think you redeemed yourself really well in round two. In round one, I felt that it was front heavy. It looks like it's not front heavy anymore. You've mm. managed to grind that weight out of the front of it. Hour and a half on the grinder. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> it sits well in the hand no matter where you hold it. You can choke up right into the choil, you can hold it out on the grip and it just feels right. Feels like it could chop, feels like it could slice. Mm -hmm. It's insanely sharp. I was really impressed on the cut test. It just those slithers just flew off the paper. The only point that I could pick at was I would have liked a higher surface finish on the yeah. blade. That's yep. it, like, you know, even the damage that was expected for what we tested it on. Well done. Cheers, thank you. Off the bat, what I like, your handle. You already knew that. That feels good. It feels really good in the hand. It's thawed out without even looking at it and just playing with it in my hand. I go, this is right. There are a couple little issues with some glue squeeze out, um, but time factors, we understand that. Pick something I don't like. The forge finish on the side is quite deep and on a cooking style knife, you have to be very careful with that style of finish. Obviously for you know picking up bacteria and food scraps in those little divots. Given more time, I'm sure you would have progressed further with your belt. Overall, I think you did terrific. So that culminated in a score of 18. I was a bit dubious again early on, how you were going. I actually loved what you did with the blade shape. It's really appealing to the eye. 
Um, I love a nice forged texture personally. Love what you did with the handle. You definitely, if you had more time to do sculpting, I think you would have aced it. It's the same problem Rob had, was time for the handle. So, you know, that's always gonna be a thing. Not much else I can really pick out. Slight warp at the end, not really a big issue, especially for a slicing knife, but overall really love what you've done. Uh, and I gave you a score of 17. Righto, Simon. I gave you a score of 21. I really liked your knife. Um, the overall blade shape, it fits the theme. One thing that I was really impressed with is the handle. It fits the hand very well. Um, you can choke up on it. Uh, it's got enough heft in it to chop. It's got a good belly on it for slicing. And I think it needs to be validated that you were out of your comfort zone on this. Mm. You've done really well for the, the limitations that you entered this competition with. Thank you so much. This is the one I've been waiting to, to judge on because I was, I was struggling to find things I didn't like about it. The theme knocked it out of the park. Like, this thing is just cool. It's beyond cool, and then when you get sick of looking at cool, you can crack open a <laughs> beer at the end of it. Like, it's amazing. <laughs> Where it let me down, the only bad thing I can find, is the execution of the handle. Mm. You can tell that it's slightly rushed. Mm. So, overall, for your efforts, mate, I scored you 19. Thanks. Steve, I was really, really dubious, and I think I said this a few times early on, that I didn't think you had enough material to go. Uh, didn't think you'd be able to get to the barbecue design. Um, liked your idea of the Leno cable. Love what you did with the bottle opener. Mm -hmm. But goes back to earlier, do you think it works? I guarantee. You guarantee I'm it. confident okay, with that. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got some uh, non-alcoholic beer here. Let's see if it goes. So I won't stab myself, but what do you guys reckon? They've got to hear it, right? It feels like it's catching. Yes. Hey. Hey. Look at that. <laughs> it will open a beer. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually quite impressive because if anyone's actually tried one of these, it's quite difficult to get that. If it's off by a little bit, it won't catch in. And that had a nice little catch without a little effort. Great. What I really love you did was the etching. Mm -hmm. This really what makes the knife for me. I actually love the ingenuity of it. it really makes the whole knife for me. And the whole style you did has a nice flow. If you look at it, it's got a nice little flow. It's not just straight. It's got a nice handle. It fits my hand perfectly, but I have little hands. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, absolutely love it. My only dislike um, would be your pin placement and handle finish, yeah. which you already know. Mm -hmm. But other than that, really, really impressed with what you've done. So overall, I gave you a score of 18. Righto, Steve. I think you've redeemed yourself really well in this round. I gave you a score of 22. Thanks. And where you've picked up points to, to reach that score for me is the theme and the function mm. of this knife. I like a bit of whimsy. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's multifunctional. And I also love that you went to that extra level and put a etched finish on the blade that mimics flames from a barbecue. Mm. My only gripe is not having the third pin in the handle, but yep. that's neither here nor there sure. with, with the rest of it. Well done. Mm. Right. Thank you. The points you got cumulatively from the forging part are basically what has put some people over the line for the winning positions, okay? This is close. So, Rob, 87. Brendan, 81. Simon, 91. Steve, 89. Simon and Steve well are on to the next you part of the competition. Yeah. yeah. Well done, boys. <laughs> Man. Good job, mate. Sorry, guys. I was blown away. Like, um, you know, these guys, some of these guys are professional knife makers. They're full-time knife makers. And to come away with, you know, second place and moving forward. I thought I was definitely going home today, like I really did. Um, you know, I, I thought like I was in a chance of like getting a good score and it being close, but I, I really didn't think I was sticking around for the next round. Yeah, couldn't, couldn't have had more fun, it was great.